I, was, mm -hmm. I started coming to Kenya since 2018. Maybe a, a year after that, I moved to Kenya. I got an apartment in Nali. Mm -hmm. uh, I, got an, I had an apartment in Shanzhou. And why am I here? Because I love Kenya. It's just a, Kenya. It's a great country. It, it's very, you know, everything is here in this one country. But, okay, African American women and, and African women. Mm -hmm. um, I find that on the continent, mm -hmm. um, African women, they're not so they're not demanding um, and they're not confrontational and like some African-American women are. Mm -hmm. I don't have to deal with that. However, in the continent, mm -hmm. women have been conditioned to be wives. They would meet women in Paris yeah. and they would fall in love with them. When they got out of the military, they get back to America, they would come yeah. back to France with their passport. Oh, and so that's, that's awesome. how it came out. They went World War One, World War Two, <laughs> Vietnam. You go to Vietnam, you'll yeah. see children over there who are mixed yeah. um, because those soldiers that fought in Vietnam yeah. they either went back yeah. to Vietnam to have, families. to have families and that's how you have had footballs not yeah. these young fellas now like running around <laughs> you know no so yeah what are we seeing? so we're talking to these or? yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> okay <laughs> and they will pick up everything yeah very clear really yes okay yeah Okay, so you're recording now? Yeah, I'm recording. Great, all right, let's go again. <laughs> so, yeah, parting shot. Huh? So your question was? Like, uh, uh, I don't know how to st st state it. We were talking about? Uh, business. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. great, okay, great. One thing I was, I, was, I was telling you I think would be a great thing mm -hmm. since you are... This kind of video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's... Start the video. Can you make me go loco? Fine, yeah. May I go with for your love? I can subscribe. So hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kim Tobia and in today's video I have a guest. Introduce yourself. All right, my name is Tony on YouTube, Tony Africa 7085. Forgive me for eating lunch, it's just I have a short, a short period that I have to get everything in. I want to definitely do this interview. Uh -huh. Okay, one of my favorite YouTubers. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Cool. Thank you. How did you find me out? Uh, I found you out years ago. Um, uh -huh. And even your sister, Nana. Yeah. Um, I used to watch you guys. And I still watch too. But I just, you know, going through and I always say, wow, I want to <laughs> meet her one day. And I finally get to meet you. So it's okay. an honor to be on your uh -huh. on your YouTube channel. Which video did you watch first? Huh? You remember. Which video of mine did you watch first? Oh, <laughs> what I remember is it you is basically, you were in the village. Mm -hmm. You were showing the village life, uh, yeah. how you cook in the village, mm -hmm. and your your dads and your parents. Yeah. Then I remember you you were you were modeling clothes, like mm -hmm. different clothing that people were ordering and things like that. Okay. So, and I remember there was a there was an American guy, uh -huh. um, pan Afri pan Africanism oh, guy with, the with your sister Nana. Oh, okay. And I remember when she started. I remember when your sister, your sister first started. Yeah. Yeah, which was about maybe two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, Okay, I'm a long, fa a long-term fan. Thank you. You're, You're a welcome. K-Tribe. Huh? You're a K-Tribe. Yeah, K-Tribe all the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, why, like, did you introduce yourself? Mm-hmm. So why, why are you in Kenya? Why am I in Kenya? I've been in Kenya. I was. Mm -hmm. I started coming to Kenya since 2018. Uh -huh. um, I initially started going to Rwanda, and it was always stopped in Kenya. It was like the, uh -huh. the Kenya hub. And I would mm -hmm. transfer planes here, mm -hmm. and then um, maybe a, a year after that, I moved to Kenya. I got an apartment in Nali. Mm -hmm. uh, I got an, I had an apartment in Shanzhou. Mm -hmm. So I'm familiar with Kenya. And why am I here? Because I love Kenya. It's just a, Kenya. it's a great country. And it's very, you know, everything is here in this one country. If I want the beach, yeah. I go to Mombasa. Mm -hmm. If I want the city life. I come to Nairobi. Safari. Safari. I've never been a safari. You don't like safari? It's not I don't like it. It's just I've never had the never interest. interest. I've been in, coming to Africa for over five years now. Mm -hmm. I just never, not even living in Africa. It was like recently I had been in, in the on the continent for over three, almost four years mm -hmm. without going back to America. 
Wow. And I went back to America for six months, and here I am back, That's nice. back in, in, in East Africa. <laughs> Why questions. did you leave? Uh, Okay, no wild questions, guy. <laughs> okay, you can only stay in Oklahoma okay, and cool. edit them out. What do you do for a living? What do I do for a living? Yes. Currently, um, I am retired, mm -hmm. but I do different things. I am a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a retired businessman in America. Mm -hmm. I'm a retired uh, retail store owner. I, mm -hmm. I used to own uniform stores in Atlanta, mm -hmm. Metro Atlanta, mm -hmm. and also Metro D.C. Mm -hmm. I'm also a mortician, mm -hmm. uh, but now I just travel the mm -hmm. continent, uh, look for investments, mm -hmm. and I invest. I invest in good projects. So I invest. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that. I'm an investor. <laughs> <laughs> How many countries have you been to Africa? And which, oh, one, which one was your first country in Africa? My first country in Africa has been was Rwanda, uh -huh. which I do have residency for Rwanda. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Rwanda, Kenya. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia, mm -hmm. uh, Tanz oh uh, Tanz Tanzania. I lived in Dar es Salaam for eight months. Mm -hmm. um, eight months. Yeah, I was there when Maga Foley died. Oh, yeah, no. I was I was living there during that period. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, that's East Africa. Mm -hmm. Then I've been West Africa. I've been to Senegal, mm -hmm. and I've been to the Gambia. Oh, yeah. that's nice. We're trying to do few facts. Which one do I prefer? Yeah, and why? Um, <laughs> why did you choose Rwanda first? I chose Rwanda first because I went to Rwanda to manufacture. Oh. That was my goal, to manufacture yeah. a, a product. Mm -hmm. um, I fell in love with Rwanda because of the cleanliness mm -hmm. and the country's peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, Kenya would, is also, I fell in love with Kenya mm -hmm. um, because it's just... It's so diverse. Mm -hmm. You have so many different cultures here. You have so many things you can do. Mm -hmm. You have Mombasa, like I said, you have the coast, mm -hmm. of, um, the ocean, and then also you have the inland, the city of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So you have a great mix here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did I answer that? Yes, you answered okay, cool. it. <laughs> We've answered actually quite a few of them. Okay, We've great. We've answered like five questions in one. That's good. Great. <laughs> Uh -huh. What's the favorite thing about living in Africa? Well, I would say the favorite thing is the um, peace, peace of mind. Um, here in Africa, on the continent, mm -hmm. unlike America, I'm not a black man. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm, I'm a man. And it's the safety. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of my friends, when they're in Atlanta, they're in New York, they, I talk to them, hey, are you safe there? Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is some of the safest countries on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, I have no problem walking anywhere at 3, 4 in the morning. Mm -hmm. I have gold chains or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're safe. There's no gunshots. Mm -hmm. No one's mugging anybody. There's no one getting robbed. No one's getting stuck up. There's no police brutality. There's none of that here on the continent. But yet, my quality of life mm -hmm. is so much better than in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have guys driving around here in the latest Benz, and <laughs> Land Rovers, and, and not really Maseratis and Porsches. Yeah. But we don't think of that in America. In America, when you think about Africa, you think animals are running around. You think about yeah. monkeys. You think about you know, people living in huts. I mean, people living in condos and million-dollar mansions here. Which, I mean, like, a lot of Americans, yeah. you know, it's true. A lot of Americans couldn't afford the lifestyle that people have here, oh, yeah. in, in, on the continent. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's true. But we've been conditioned, growing, especially in my generation, yeah. uh, growing up, we used to just see, you know, UNICEF commercials and babies with big bellies and flies running around and can yeah. you donate this mm -hmm. and that was Africa mm -hmm. we grew up and you know you saw Tarzan and the jungle mm -hmm. and and they talk about HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. I mean it's totally um, a propaganda and we but we were conditioned that way yeah. uh, one thing you know I would love to see I would love to see a lot of African Americans come to the continent mm -hmm. And enjoy this. Enjoy the freedom. Enjoy the uh, living the lifestyle, which is like amazing. So, talking about that, what's your first impression when you landed in Kenya? Let's say Kenya, because you are currently in Kenya. 
my first impression, well, my first impression when I came to the, the continent in general yeah. was that, I, it's sad, and even though I'm quite educated, I, I, I believe the same thing. I, so I, the media plays a really huge role in the mindsets of people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the media, especially when I was growing up, we didn't yeah. have all the cable channels. And that. There were like mm -hmm. three major channels, mm -hmm. and so whatever you saw, ABC, CBS, whatever those channels mm -hmm. were, mm -hmm. that's what you believed. And we, we even have to know they're showing that part of Africa in CNN, the traditional media. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what you believe. If you come, if you live in America, you think that there's nothing in Africa but war, poverty, and and crime, and yeah, it just you know people are just suffering here. Yeah. So as, well, as a youth, we were encouraged to go to places like Italy and and Germany and Rome and Paris. Oh we would romanticize that these are the places that you would when you you want to go. So if you if you have money, then if you want to have a great time, you go to Italy, you go to France, you go to Rome. And I haven't been, you know, in the military. I've been to all those places, and I can tell you, there's no place on earth that can compete with some of the malls that are here on the continent. Really? Really? I'm serious. Um, I've been in the military, so I've been all over America. I've been all over Europe. They don't even come close. You can go to Two Rivers here, mall here, yeah. and it's like, wow, <laughs> there's no mall in America that can compete with that mall. Yeah, it's it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> even the malls here, the local malls here, yeah, there's they're so modern that you say, wow, like every brand, every, called. and you have the same brands that you have in, uh, in America. Mm -hmm. and it's like. Yeah, but you you know you can't tell people this because they won't believe it. They have to come and experience it. <laughs> what changed your mindset until you came? Like actually, like what changed my mindset yeah. where I came or why like, I stayed? Because, no, like why you came the first like were you scared or coming? I I was okay. I was well being you know prior to um, coming to the continent, you know, yeah. but I, I had school uniform stores in yeah. America. Uh -huh. So I, I would deal with different vendors. Yeah. China was my biggest, you know, market. Yeah. And then Bangladesh, I would, you know, import things. So I was used to working with foreigners. And I even used to do uniforms for schools in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, so, and be, having been in the military and having traveled to different countries, I wasn't afraid to yeah. go to other countries. Um, my dad, background is Guyanese. I even got married in Guyana mm -hmm. like, <laughs> 1985, which was probably before he was even born. And so I've traveled to West Indies. I've been different places. So leaving the country, um, America wasn't a really a fair. Come to Africa. No, come to Africa. Look at there. <laughs> Look at there. Yeah. Leaving the, leaving the continent, I wasn't really afraid. <laughs> to leave because I had traveled different places but uh, but once I came it was <laughs> all those myths and no, <laughs> and and I know yeah, they're gonna believe, but it's true but that's not the case really no that's a that's my first time oh but you know what like I said yeah. I told you I was telling you about the incident I was in Mombasa yeah maybe about three weeks ago yeah and they give they have camel rides where they take the camel on the beach yeah. and people pay i don't know yeah, equivalent pay, to like pay. three dollars or two dollars yeah. and they ride the camel and they take photos and pictures yeah. well one of the trainers were taking the camel back yeah. to where they keep them at yeah. and i went to take a picture now we were on the beach we was on the road yeah they went to take a picture and the camel recognized me or something they got mad and started to chase me so you people, if, if I was gonna put that on YouTube, and I said no. If I put this on YouTube, people gonna say, "Oh, you see, yes. there are animals running around crazy." But no, that it, that's not the case. I mean, yeah, you know what's equivalent? If you, if anyone's in America and they grew up in the South, mm -hmm. um, I used to visit. You know, I was stationed in North Carolina, Fort Bragg, and mm -hmm. different places in Georgia. If you go on the outskirts, you will see cows, yeah. um, Roman. You will see pigs. You will mm -hmm. see chickens. Yeah. That's the, it's the, the same, same way that you have here in, 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 in <laughs> on the continent. You don't see chickens roaming the roads. I mean, this is a, you got major skyscraper buildings. There's no chickens roaming the road. There's no pigs running in the street. You know what I mean? Another misconception people say, they say like it's humid and hot. I yeah. don't know why people assume Africa or Kenya, it's like very, very hot. 
because that's what we were conditioned to believe that there's nothing we were conditioned to believe that there were jungles and deserts in Africa. No, there's, not, 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 there's not, not, no jungles right around. Where, where's jungles and gorillas swinging? And no, 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 you know. <laughs> and in some parts of Africa is there, like it's a Mombasa. Yeah. You go to you go to mm -hmm. Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Some parts are hot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if I go to Mombasa right now, it's mm -hmm. hot. But here, we're sitting in, in Kenya, you have a jacket on, and yeah. I'm getting ready to shake because <laughs> it's, it gets cold here. Yeah. Also, you can go, in, and also in Tanzania, you go, kill, um, kill, what is it, Mount? Um, Mount Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro. You can go skiing. So how hot <laughs> can it be if you can ski? You know, you, know, you got snow. The weather is perfect. Right? It's what is perfect, so. Yeah. yeah. So another thing I wanted to ask you is, should I look? Wait for you to eat. Is no, I'm not cold. Uh -huh. So why why did you leave your million? Did you leave your million dollar company in America to become a passport bro? A passport bro. Mm. No, I guess I was a passport bro when I left the military. Yeah. But after I left the military, that which inspired me to travel. Yeah. I was traveling anyway. Yeah. Uh, my company. Yeah. I, I had. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I I did well. Reason why I left. My comp I closed my company down because I had, to be honest with you, I had a heart attack, I had two heart attacks, and I had to go bypass surgery in Atlanta. Uh -huh. So it kind of made me, I, I couldn't work because I couldn't take the stress on it of doing business anymore. Uh -huh. um, I, I didn't want to open a funeral home. Uh -huh. uh, I really just could not work. And, and so I just closed everything down uh -huh. and I needed to change. And I came, like I said, I came to Rwanda, mm -hmm. and I just fell in love with the freedom, just the freedom of, on the mm -hmm. continent. And then from one country going to the other country, I just said, you know what, this is this is the way of life. I don't have to worry about getting robbed. I don't have to worry about gunshots, and I don't have to worry about racism, mm -hmm. police brutality. The police have the police here; they don't even carry guns. You know, mm -hmm. even on, in other countries, they don't even carry guns because it's not needed. That that. Um, that mindset is not the same as in America. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's crazy because one, at one time I, I used to be a teacher mm -hmm. early in my career when I, when I left school. And the biggest challenge of teaching is classroom management with the children. Mm -hmm. They just have no respect for just oh. being in school and for the teachers. And, and unfortunately, in the inner city schools, that's the norm. Mm -hmm. However, here, you can go to the village, you can go to schools outside of the major cities, or even in the city. That's not a problem. The children, every school that I've been to on the continent, the children are obedient and they're eager to learn. They want to learn. And mm -hmm. you don't have to have that waste time on disciplining the children. Mm -hmm. and so that's the difference. They're not, they're not coming to school to fight. They're not coming to school to, to yeah. bully other children. No, that that doesn't exist, exist over there. So, yeah. and, do you feel like it has changed your health, your mindset? Oh yeah, I, I don't have the stress that I've had uh, in America. Well, um, uh -huh. um, I eat healthier, the food is fresh, and um, without having that stress, mm -hmm. you 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 have a better quality. Of, you can have a better quality of life. They ask for the quality of life, and then with the exchange rate, where mm -hmm. with in the countries between different countries. Uh, you could, I could live here like I could probably never afford to live uh, yeah, in America, God. even... So you get the value of your money. You get the uh, huge value of money. And that's working, making, in my companies, I've, I've, I've gone through millions of dollars in my stores, you know. Um, even then, the way I lived in Maryland, I lived in Atlanta, it, it, <laughs> over here I, I could live 10 times better, yeah. Uh -huh. What did you change about America? America, if you quote. What would I change about America? Yeah. It would have to be the racism uh, towards um, people of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just discrimination. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, I mean, it, when you look at that, you just, I guess it'd be one big title, would be racism. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what would you change about Africa, if you quote? What could I change about Africa, if I could? Yeah. Um, I guess it would be the petty corruption yeah. that you have to deal with at times, sure. uh, with different, you know, mm -hmm. officials, even people. 
You can go to the store. Everybody, yeah, everybody want to haggle. Yeah, the Uber driver, <laughs> yeah, the, the Uber driver. It, you know, all that is corruption. The corruption has gone even to the little kids. It, 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 yeah, it's like you go somewhere. I like I know this French fry. It, it, it probably caught. It should be the equivalent of fifty cents. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. once they hear your accent. Oh, it's now two dollars, but they allow you to haggle it down. Yeah. You know, say, oh, come on, one fifty, oh, one seventy. But when I should, when I should go, when I should just have to pay the fifty. Yeah. You understand? Know sure. That's what I'd like to change. Um, and other than that, I, you know, it that is certain countries, but another country will be like to change. Um, I like the quality of education that the children receive and the level. I, I, I'm mm -hmm. impressed with that. Um, healthcare. Depends on what country you're in. Yeah. Um, I can hear it in, in Kenya, yeah. Nairobi. It's, it's equivalent. It's equivalent to America. Really? Yeah. You uh -huh. when it comes to the like the certain I had a triple bypass surgery, uh -huh. and so I am confident and I feel comfortable with the cardiac care that I could yeah. receive here. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's nice to know. So, what's your typical day like here in Africa? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Relaxing, Relaxing. help put some of my mental health and my, my physical health. That's, that's my nice. typical day. That's <laughs> if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you be? Oh, I don't know because I haven't been every place in the world, yeah. but I think I would, I would definitely want to be on the continent. Oh, that's nice. I lived in Europe, I lived in Germany for two years. Mm -hmm. I lived in America most of my life. I've been throughout the Caribbean. Asia. Um, yeah. Huh? Asia. Have you been to Asia? No, no. Oh. So. So you know, every person is in Asia. Yeah, but I'm but I'm <laughs> not a fish. I'm not. A, I'm too old to be a passport for all. No, so China, the Philippines, and all that. That's how I'm married. the age limit. Huh? The person's broke. I think when you get to a certain age and you yeah. mature. What actually does it mean, passport broke? Passport. You know what? I, I see on YouTube and they're associated with these men running to uh, different countries that to 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 have sex with you know with different women. Yeah. No, that's not a passport bro. The passport bro actually is it comes from people like myself who uh -huh. have been in the military. Uh -huh. Um they retired and they go back to these different countries that they've been in. Exactly. Yeah. And it really started way back in World War One. Oh. Where the black soldiers went over to France, yeah. and they, the French used to invite them to be pilots and, oh. and everything because you, they wouldn't allow black people to fly planes in America because of racism. Yeah. So those guys used to go to France, mm -hmm. and they would meet women in Paris, yeah. and they would fall in love with them. When they got out of the military, <laughs> they back in America, they would yeah. come back to France with their passport. Oh, and so that's, that's awesome. how it came out. They went World War One, World War Two, <laughs> Vietnam. You go to Vietnam, yeah. you'll see children over there who are mixed yeah. um, because those soldiers that fought in Vietnam yeah. they either went back yeah. to Vietnam to have, families. to have families and that's how you have path football. Not yeah. these young fellas now like running around. <laughs> you know, no, that's not true. <laughs> I just hope your viewers don't mind me eating my No, I also words. eat. No. Do you spot any difference between African Americans and Africans? African American men or women or what in general? In general. Ah. Well. Or women, let's say women. Okay, African American women and and African women. Mm -hmm. Um. Let me say first of all, black women are all black women. You know, you guys are all the same. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. I find that on the continent, mm -hmm. um, African women, they're not so. They're not demanding, mm -hmm. um, and they're not confrontational, mm -hmm. and like some African American women are, mm -hmm. and that's because we, they grew up in a society that they had to be mm -hmm. dominant. So a lot of African American women had to be head of household, because yeah. um, mm -hmm. the system, the way the system was designed, it mm -hmm. kind of removed the African American male out the household. Mm -hmm. So African American women today mm -hmm. are, are, nice. are they're independent. Where they don't need a man because they've gone to school, they've worked hard, and they, they pursue in the, the American dream without a man. And so, in a relationship, mm -hmm. you find that same those same characteristic traits. Yeah. It spills over to the relationship, which is bad. And mm -hmm. it's like you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't have to deal with that. However, in the continent, mm -hmm. women have been conditioned to be wives. Yeah. They, they 
they're conditioned to be, even if you know they're professional in in their relationship, mm -hmm. they know how to separate from being an attorney or a doctor during the day, and then but when they come home, mm -hmm. they are wives to their husband and to their children, and they, they they don't they're not confrontational with their husband, mm -hmm. they're not trying to compete with their husband. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's a big difference. So I, you know, a lot of African American men mm -hmm. would probably prefer yeah. women from the continent because it's just you wouldn't have the stress, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't be challenged every day. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Any whole uncomfortable situation experience from you, all your travels? Have you ever experienced any uncomfortable or hor horrific? Huh? Horrific. Horrific experience. experiences yeah. from my travels. Yes. Um, on the continent or, or just in general? In, in, travels. in oh, my travels. In my travels. I mean, your tra my travels has been smooth. I mean, some of the, <laughs> the, the, the horrific things I've had, maybe a layover, a long layover. Uh, yeah. I might have a long layover in the airport, in the country. <laughs> um, I have to sleep on the floor in the airport oh. until I catch another flight. Uh, that's all. But, that's usual. Yeah, but there's some airports. They have hotels in the airport, so you know that that's taken care of. Um, no, I haven't had any bad experiences. That's uh, nice. Yeah. That's good. So, mm. how's the nightlife here compared to America? Mm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> the nightlife. <laughs> what country? Uh, let's say Kenya and uh, and Rwanda. Mm. <laughs> okay. Please excuse me. Okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> well, Rwanda, mm. the nightlife uh, compared to Kenya. Yeah. Oh, it's totally different. Like Rwanda is very light and day. Rwanda is very conservative country. Yeah. Um, they have there's clubs you, you can go to and they party and do that. But mm -hmm. then again, you remember we let mm -hmm. the regulation yeah. that, that recently came out at two o'clock. Yes, two o'clock. Two a.m. You yeah. to gotta go off or down. <laughs> Alcohol is done. Yeah, you know. So Rwanda is a great country for people. for people. I would say in my age range, yeah. my demographic, who we'll have a family. So yeah. if you're like forty something, fifty, yeah. sixty, Rwanda is a perfect. You know, mm -hmm. destination because it's it's, it's conservative. Mm -hmm. There's no crime, and I mean, Rwanda, there's practically no crime. <laughs> um, it's the, it's the, one of the cleanest countries uh, mm -hmm. in Africa for sure, yeah. and probably on on this earth. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to worry about issues like excesses, noise. Mm -hmm. um, everything is orderly. Mm -hmm. So their 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 nightlife is about two a.m. Mm -hmm. It's finished, and it's not that many clubs that yeah, you're gonna be yeah. running. However, in Kenya, you'll think you you think you're in New York City or LA um, because you have parties that will Even start. On oh, a party Even on Monday. I've yeah. seen in Kenya. I've seen people going to church, yeah. and the party's still operating outside. You know what I mean? And, and the church might be two blocks away. You see people going to family going to church, and then people are still partying. And but Kenya, Nairobi, especially in Nairobi, this yeah. is a major, a major city. Yeah. So this is the equivalent of if you're living in Manhattan, yeah. and it's basically really you have trains, you have the, the bus system, you yeah. have Uber, you have boat, you have uh, you know everything, mm -hmm. yeah. and you have clubs uh, for people from all different ethnic backgrounds, like, all class level, all classes, yeah. all class level. You got from five star clubs mm -hmm. where you'd be like wow, and then you have <laughs> your you know you might have to be the village and you you have your basically you have your um, <laughs> local bus. your local your local clubs yeah yeah. <laughs> so we call them juke joints in the south. You you have those. They call them juke joints. Yeah, wow. you have those too. Mm -hmm. So for Americans, which city here in Africa will give a better quality or value or nightlife and what? Oh, basically answer that. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, it's very similar. Uh, Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. very similar. To be in, in a major city, New York, yeah. or yeah, and I'm from Brooklyn, so I, I refer back to New York because I know yeah. it well. So, which country was more hospitable to you, the ones you visited in the continent? Um, I would say 
probably West Africa. For some reason, I mean, yeah, I love you get love on the continent wherever you go. Yeah. But West Africa, I think because African Americans, mm -hmm. yeah. we we mm -hmm. most of us who came yeah. for, with the slave trade, yeah. we came from West Africa. So mm -hmm. when you're in West Africa, they they know our history. Yeah. So they see African American, it's like welcome yeah. home, brother. Mm -hmm. When you come to East Africa, yeah. you know, they, they didn't have anything to do with the slave trade, and they didn't, they don't know anything about yeah. the slave trade. So when they see a black man here, it's like, okay, you're a black man okay. with money, yeah. you're you're a black man, so and so. <laughs> but it's not like West Africa. Oh, so I guess yeah. in West Africa, they, they give you that ah, welcome, welcome home, home, brother. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, so with, um, wait, let me see. So which country, which African country, would you recommend? A black man who've never visited Africa before that will prepare them mentally and not have a huge culture shock. Definitely Kenya, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. Definitely Kenya. I would start with them in Nairobi. Yes. And then no, just you know what? All through Kenya, because you have that every every part. Even you go outside the village and you go outside the, the village. Yeah, yeah. There's but always something that. There's always something to do, and no matter where you're at in America, you'll be able to identify with Kenya. Yeah. If you're from the South, you'll be able to identify you from LA, you'll be able to identify you New York. Yeah. It, it, it's very similar. Yeah. Uh, do you know Austin? Austin Holman? No, I don't know Austin Holman. Personally, I don't know, but I, don't, I but watch, do you watch his videos. I watch his videos, yeah. He's a young man. See, Austin's, <laughs> Austin's 24. Yeah. yeah. So our perspective is going to be totally different, yeah. but I can identify with him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I, I watch it. What do you think about his videos, dating different women, African women? <sighs> He's 24. Yeah. And is at 24, Austin or you're doing? Austin. Okay. So do you know Austin Holman? Are you recording now? Yeah, now I'm recording. Huh. <laughs> no, I haven't. I don't personally know him, but I, I watched some his videos. Yeah. What's yes. your opinion about his videos? Ah, uh, he's um he's 24 years old. Yeah. And he he behaves like a 24 year old young man. I, I would expect to behave. Yeah. Uh, going from country to country, I think he articulates very well. Yeah. I think yeah. he's a he's a handsome young man. Yeah. Um, and uh, he behaves like a, his character. He behaves like a 24 year old. He's he's, he's uh, living his life and experiencing uh, Africa. Which is very rare for a 24-year-old black American man to travel outside of America. So yeah. he's doing a lot of... Yeah, he's, he's blessed. I mean, a lot of 24-year-olds mm -hmm. cannot even uh, really make their car note and, and being able to, you know, uh -huh. to have an apartment and live, let alone to travel to travel the continent and, and the world because he's been all over South America as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But even if he... They, even if uh, like this, this black young man, they will not necessarily prefer. With means, they will not prefer, preferably prefer to travel to Africa. Normally, they'll prefer to travel to Brazil, uh, Philippines, Dominican Republic, America. Colombia. Yeah, yeah, and you know why? Why? So? why? Because they they've been, <laughs> they, you know, they've been conditioned. They've been conditioned that you know you go to these countries, yeah. and you know a lot of them are going for sex tourism. To be honest, if, keep it honest. A lot of them are going to have sex with women for less than they could. And they choose this uh, by, mm -hmm. by racial looking women. Why? That's all part of the condition in America. Anything mm -hmm. that's lighter than anything it's that's anti black superior. is superior and prettier. So they run to countries where mm -hmm. the women have long natural hair, mm -hmm. uh, they, they're lighter complexion. Mm -hmm. And you got the Colombians and Dominican, you know, that, that's all part of being, that's all part of the condition in America. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, that's what uh, they was told was beauty. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why they go to these countries. Okay. What's the shock you experienced in Kenya as a black American? That you never saw it coming. <laughs> uh, the shock I experienced that women as far as women, all you have different types of women, and women are beautiful, and that women people are people. Um, I shocked <laughs> that when I when I walk places, I see people that look just like me. Look at my cousin. Look like my auntie. Um, yeah, you actually look. Uh, yeah, you actually look like the former president. Yeah, of look at Kenya. The, a lot of people say that. I look at like the former president of Kenya. Yeah. They, they even at the airport. They I get <laughs> privileges. They like is that? I say yeah, it's my uncle. That's my cousin. But no, but true that uh, especially in Kenya. 
Yeah. Kenyans are just like New Yorkers. Yeah. They're just like Americans <laughs> and the behavior and everything, oh. but 10 times better. They're New Yorkers without the crime. I'll mm -hmm. bump somebody. <laughs> no one's going to curse me out. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you don't have that because, <laughs> you know, it's that brotherly love. Yeah. And that's one thing I love about here. Yeah. You know, because you guys were never taught to hate each other. No. It, it, it doesn't exist. That mindset doesn't exist. But in America, unfortunately, that that's our history. Mm -hmm. So, talking about the like the cult, like people. It was more with Austin Holloman, the, the, the pastor. You know, true. Like I said, you know, let me just say, you know, uh, I was disappointed uh -huh. in his last video with Ghana. You gonna uh, will I put it here? Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. His last video that he was in Ghana, I was yeah. disappointed. I kind of oh. lost some respect for the young man uh -huh. because um, he he didn't take into account, you know, the cultural aspects of oh, Ghana okay. and what it represented, the the castle and the slave trade oh, okay. and all that, and um, he kind of had a negative experience in Ghana because mm -hmm. the, the internet and mm -hmm. and I guess the people were not as uh, welcoming as he found in Kenya and other countries. Mm -hmm. One thing I, you know, one thing I, I've, I've experienced and I've learned, yeah. when, as a young man, yes. even as a man, when you go to countries that the poverty yeah. is high, mm -hmm. I'm talking about abject poverty, you have people who are very poor. Yes, they're gonna. The women are gonna be more friendlier, more. You know what I mean? But when you go to countries that like, like if you're in Kenya, for instance, mm -hmm. if you're in Nairobi, mm -hmm. you meet a woman in Nairobi, you meet a woman on the coast in Mombasa or in the village somewhere. Yeah. They're gonna. The interaction is gonna be different. different. It's gonna be totally different. Yeah. Some of the women in Nairobi, you, you're not impressed. They're not impressed by you. Yeah. yeah you, you're, you're, you're a foreigner. You're American. You have money. Yeah. yeah but this woman lives in a. a million dollar home equivalent to a million dollar home yeah. is driving the latest Mercedes or yeah. BMW so when you meet women in, 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 in the inner city here yeah. that are professional and their families are professional and they travel to Europe and do it you, you're not gonna get that same women trying to throw stuff at you now yeah you go to the impoverished parts of mm -hmm. uh, Kenya or you yeah. go to like the coast and mm -hmm. where it's mostly tourists and beaches and that yeah, you're gonna get that because people come from different parts of the, the country for employment. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, and I don't think in, in Ghana, mm -hmm. for example, um, is it is the cost of living is almost equivalent to some place in America. Mm -hmm. One bedroom might cost you fifteen hundred. Yeah, in Ghana, what? if you, yeah, if one you live bedroom. one bedroom in Ghana, bedroom. It, That's but so it, high. it's it's high because. Um, a lot of Americans, a lot of uh, West, you know, Westerners have moved there, oh. and the cost of living has gone up. Same yeah. thing here in Nairobi. Yeah. Um, there's million dollar um, apartments here. But it doesn't reach that point where one bedroom is fifteen hundred. No, no, not. But there's some places in Westland uh -huh. that you can pay from eight hundred to fifteen hundred yeah, for a one bedroom. Yeah. I, like it appears like Kilimani, it's the same thing. There's some places you can pay 2100 um, for one bedroom because that's the quality of life, you know. But if you want that quality of life, and that yeah. same one bedroom for 2100 is something you that you'll be on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan yeah. paying um, $8,000 a month, yeah. and it'll be identical the same. Yeah. So, why do you think people like black Americans are moving out of Ghana and? Tanzania because they're trickling into Kenya right now. I think uh, a lot of African Americans are moving from Ghana. One, uh -huh. one, one reason I just said it, uh -huh. it, 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 it's expensive. It's expensive. It's expensive. Ghana. Um, the infrastructure. Well, the the infrastructure is in like yeah. like here. I mean here, you, like I said, you, you ride around Nairobi. It's equivalent. You ride around Manhattan or DC or LA, um, uh -huh. Tanzania, uh -huh. uh, Dar es Salaam. Is, is their capital mm -hmm. and it it's not really advanced not, yeah. as as Kenya yeah. or America uh, also in the cost of living is high so well is it high? it's high but not Highly. not not high like you would you would compare to other country because the US dollar is much stronger mm -hmm. in, in Tanzania mm -hmm. but also I think the main reason why a lot of uh, African Americans are leaving Tanzania is yeah. because Tanzania has changed 
since the late president Michael Foley died, I've even seen a change. Um, uh, immigration, you it was immigration was easy there, but now you you get a visa, you have to leave. After your visa's up 30 days, 90 days, you have to leave the country, and then you come back, and then you, you get issued another visa. And sometimes it might give you 30 days, sometimes it might give you six days, and you just don't know. So I think that's a lot of reasons where people are leaving. Unlike Rwanda mm -hmm. or Kenya, yeah. these countries are very welcoming. If you if visa, you can get long-term visas. Mm -hmm. So, And the cost of living mm -hmm. is, is much cheaper. You have more to do. Rwanda is much cheaper. No, Rwanda, expensive Rwanda is expensive. Yeah, Rwanda is expensive. Rwanda is expensive. Um, but the quality of life is it's like no other. You, I mean the peace. It, it depends what you which, what you're looking for. So Rwanda and Kenya. It, cost yeah. of living? No, like yeah, like cost of living and the value of the dollar. Your, value your, of live like not even like material wise, like your quality of life, yeah. peace of mind. Yeah. I, I I would have to say Kenya would have to. Kenya would be number one, and I love Rwanda. Rwanda <laughs> I love Rwanda, but I, Kenya has so much more to offer. Oh. You, know, you know what I mean? It, it's so much bigger. It's a bigger country, and it has, you know, it's more, they have more of everything. Yeah. So, one of the last questions Africans, do you feel like Africans are highly influenced by black American culture? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boy, you you got look, look at the look at the tuk tuks, look at the uh, the border borders, and look at the uh, the batato. You see Biggie Smalls painting on every every band. You see uh, everything from Drake to any rapper, any talent. You know what I mean? Little Kim is all is all over. Um, but one thing that is good, they adopted that part of the culture, yeah. but they didn't adopt the negative part. They didn't adopt the parts where the violent, right, the thug life. I guess you, you guys would call it thug life, yeah. They're, they're, you know. No, it's in the music. But yeah, but it, even, it though, it. even though it's in the music, and this is throughout the continent, just not kidding. No, I'm saying like I adopted the, I knew the thug life because of the lyrics of the music. Right, that's two parts, thug life, right? <laughs> yeah. But we, we, you, they haven't adopted the I hate my brother. I'm gonna kill my brother and all that. No, I mean, listen to the beat. And also, one thing here in, in Kenya, I noticed the music that is played on the radios. Mm. They really, like, they're from the '80s yes. and the '90s. They don't really play this cool. this yeah, new sure. hip hop and all that. No, they play. <laughs> you still hear Biggie and West Up, You know what I mean? And it's no, you drive around. It's huge. Yeah. Huh? It's huge. Uh, yeah. yeah. The influence is huge, and they, and they love African Americans. They love the yeah, African American true. culture. And you know, what's so crazy. African Americans don't even think that. They think yeah. African. Oh, no, because that's how because we've been taught. We've been taught. We've been raised to say, oh, Africans, they don't like us. They hate us. All that. I was so sad when I came across my first, like, American, African American. She was a woman. Mm. She told me, like, she thought, like, we we hated them because we saw them. And I think that's the first time I heard of it. But it's true. Is it growing true? up, growing up in America, yeah. and then you know what happens. I remember too. You have as a child, you know it's so crazy. Growing up in America, yeah. they used to do the same thing about people from the West Indies. Yeah. They say, "Oh, all the people from Jamaica, they come up from the banana boat, and and they're this and they and African booty scratches and all that." Because that is the way that they had conditioned African Americans to think about even people from Jamaica, Trinidad, and that. Yeah. But then as years went on. Mm -hmm. Reggae music became more popular. Yeah. Um, people start listening to Bob Marley, Marley and different yeah. other things. Now, in the eighties and like the eighties, early eighties, not everybody's Jamaican. Everybody got a cousin. Oh, I'm half Jamaican. I'm half Trinidadian. So the trend changed, and people start wearing dreadlocks. Yeah. I remember mean, before people saw dreadlocks in America, they're like, "Oh, look at that hair! Look nasty! Look dirty!" Now. The, the, the people paying three, four hundred dollars to get dreads put in their hair. <laughs> so the same thing is happening with with Africa. Yeah. People was thinking, oh, Africa, but the kids, people walk around with flies and they starve and all that. And now people listen to Afro beats and everybody <laughs> know, oh, I got a cousin who's who's half Cameroon. Oh, my cousin's Nigerian. Everybody, yeah, it's crazy. But that is the trauma that that African Americans has gone through. Uh -huh. And always, we always been searching for identity, black power, and all this, you know. African Americans, especially those who are in my generation, yeah. need to visit the continent. I'm not saying you should live on the continent or That's you should true. move here, but I'm saying at least yeah. visit and you will see. And once you see, you'll change your mind yourself. Yeah, you'll change your mind yourself. So, anything last words? 
where, where they, should the people find you? Okay, uh, people can find me on, I started, you guys inspired me to do a YouTube channel, so yeah. it's Tony Africa 7085, um, and um, I, I guess I'm going to do YouTube channel, yeah. but my mark, I guess my the people who I want to reach uh, kind of yeah. different from your, your demographic. Yeah. I want to meet those, uh, as you call them in America, OGs. Yeah. OGs and OGS. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, I want them to experience um, Africa. this Africa, experience this life. Um, and all the countries aren't the same. Yeah. You know, there, there are many countries on the continent. Yeah. 54 or 55? I think 54. 54 countries. There's, there's one yeah. that they call it, not, but I think it's officially 54 countries. Yeah. Um, and every country is to, is totally different. Yeah. And all that we we learned in school about, you know, the jungle and people <laughs> running around and animals and swinging. On. Look here. If you take a shot of here, we're at a fast food spot. And I'm eating, I'm eating some. If you go, next, Amalia. you go next door, just, I can go to KFC and get chicken. Yeah. Or I go to Burger King's and, yeah. but or I go to Subways. Yeah. They don't believe that. I can call right now, order Domino's yeah, or Pizza Uber. Hut, and have it delivered here yeah. with Uber Eats. Yeah. You know, it's the same it's thing. All buildings. Watch my channel. Watch my videos. You'll see. Ah. I share everything. It, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As far as like a business, I think it would be a great. You know. As we discussed earlier, yeah. Since you're Kenyan and you travel most of East Africa, you know Swahili. Mimi, Kima, Mimi, <laughs> Mimi. Yes. Uh, Anasima Kiswahili Kidogo. Kidogo. However, I've been on the continent for over over four years. Yeah. I can't understand Swahili. Um, but you, you know your culture. You know the different cultures and. I think together we can work together to bring people from the, uh, the America mm -hmm. and also the UK, but basically America, yeah. and so they can experience mm -hmm. um, the, what the continent has to offer. Mm -hmm. The younger population and then the OGs and OGs, like I did, <laughs> experience it and prepare things so they can come and, and, and see and experience this quality of life. And I, I'm quite sure once a lot of them come, they're never one gonna, never one going to go back. And those who have to go back are always going to have in their heart that yearning to come back and visit the continent. We as a people need to be stronger and not be divided. I, like I said, as a child growing up, I saw it so much with uh, my friends and family from the West Indies. Um, once they came to America and they assimilated um, and, and black Americans got to really know the truth about the Caribbean. And they, now everybody was flocking to Jamaica, flocking to Trinidad for carnival. You know, different places. And the same thing is happening now. We look at the move to Ghana. Mm -hmm. A lot of African Americans are going to Ghana. A lot of African Americans are now coming. During COVID, a lot of them went to Tanzania because the President Magafuli didn't lock down the country. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of Americans who didn't want to take the COVID vaccine came to um, Tanzania and they were in Dar es Salaam and they, they're still there to this day. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to. As I mentioned earlier, we can come together, collaborate, yeah. come with a uh, start doing tours, yeah. uh, and not just tours of showing people yeah. buildings yeah. and everything, yeah. but yeah. but start showing people the real Africa. Africa. Yeah. You know, what? you know, you want to live, you know, not live in the hut like me. I live in the 14th floor yeah. in the apartment building. You know, I go in my elevator. Yeah. I got this music. I got everything. <laughs> door man. I got security. Have a good day. Ah, I have a jail. You know, I have everything. <laughs> And these people, you know, people in America, they don't, they don't believe that, yeah. and they can come and experience the same things through Airbnbs and yeah. and different uh, hostels and guest houses and different accommodations and renting vehicles. Different budget levels. Different budget levels. Budget. I mean, you have the same thing: Avis, uh, budget rent a car. You yeah. want to rent a car, you rent a Lexus. You do yeah. this. Everything is here for them, but yeah. they just don't know. And it is that fear. When you have the fear of the unknown, people don't want to step out. And I think together we can we can help people we can collaborate and help so people do that. The services, some of the services are gonna be open. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And so for all those old guys who, who can't find a wife, hey, I got you. Yeah. Come on over. What and those contacts. Uh, you can, I mean, you can reach on my uh, email because the OGs like the email. The OGs like the email. Yeah, okay, so Facebook. all right, you can reach me on uh, request r e q u e s t one six six at aol dot com. Always you can drop something through my YouTube channel at Tony Africa 7085. Yeah. And um, 
willing to help you know come on help you out and i'm not i don't need the money i'm i'm doing it for the love so i'm not charging you um to give you advice i'm not you know everybody i see people get charging consultations yes. and all that. i got you you know what i mean <laughs> i want to see people live their good life. good life like i said i had two heart attacks and uh, triple bypass surgery, yeah. and that came from the stress of America. And I don't want to see my brothers and sisters who have worked so hard, mm -hmm. raised their family, just and they, they were great in their careers, just to live their life in misery and, and, and worrying about uh, tomorrow if they're going to get shot or mm -hmm. police brutality when there's a whole world out here. There is a world out here and that they can enjoy the quality of life. That would make me feel good, and I enjoy doing that. Just just what I like to do. So that's it for today. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I'm going to post this video once she finished editing because I have yes. no idea how to do that. I'm going to post it on my uh, on my YouTube channel. Okay, and I'll send you a link. Thank you so much. Okay. And um, to all your subscribers, <laughs> hi. Bye. Uh, we say mambo. Mambo poa. <laughs> so. Bye. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.